Welcome back to my lure box. In this video, I'm gonna take you through my tactics and lure choices for fishing in post flood conditions. In the last week or so, we've had a heap of rain down here in Southeast Queensland and it's made all of the systems just run really mud dirty and uh, the color of the place can just get really frustrating. So I've been out fishing, I've been chasing bass, flathead, mangrove jack, trevally, and today I'm out ch chasing bull sharks because they love this dirty water. Lure fishing can get really frustrating when the conditions change as quickly as they have and the water gets super dirty, there's heaps of brush and just debris in the water. So it can change the way that you want to fish and change the fish that you want to go for. So let me take you through some of my tactics and I'll show you some of the lures that I like to use during these times. The first thing that I like to do when we get these heavy rains in those first probably 48 hours, the two days of, of post runoff and once it's all draining out, coming out of the drains and filling the canals and the rivers, I like to go and fish around the drains. And especially when it's still clear but it's getting dirty and the first of that runoff's happening, it's a really good time to chase Gold Coast Barra or Barra in South East Queensland on the sunny coast as well. But even the big mangrove jack I've found in those first couple of days hang out around the drains. Some of the areas where the water pours in, it's a great option to go and hit those as soon as they start to boil over and the water comes through. Some of the lure choices that I'd use for that stuff, you really want to be fishing with weedless rigs. So, you know, little plastics are really the way to go. If you're fishing areas where there's drains and not a lot of debris coming out, hard bodies and, and other plastics and shrimp and things like that, bigger baits are, what, are the way to go. But if you're chasing bass, little TT snake lock systems like that, rigged with like a little paddle tail in a really obvious colour, is probably my, uh, my pick. So something like this with a really obvious contrast to it or, or a white, like an Eco Dick Gear Bolt white, in anything from like a three to four inch for bass and mangrove jack, they're the way to go. What happens once it all starts to, to distribute and get pushed all throughout the system, a lot of the fish start to move. And uh, over the years I've spoken at seminars about the movement of mangrove jack during this period, but you'll get barra feeding, but a lot of the smaller fish and, and mangrove jack especially will start to move down the system and get out and try and find some of that clearer, more salty water. Some fish do go the other way and get up and hang around in those drains. And I've found that sometimes it's those really big mangrove jack that tend to do that. And they'll hang around for, for three or four days. But generally what I've found, and it's been playing out this last week, is the, the flathead numbers, even brim, Trevally, mangrove jack, it all starts to become really difficult fishing, apart from chasing bull sharks. So I'm gonna be doing that tonight. But let me take you through some of the stuff that I use when I'm chasing jacks during that time. So diving lures, if there's no debris in the water, they're the way to go. And the contrast on the lure becomes, I reckon, really important in this dirty water. I've got a lot of lures that are kind of translucent or really natural, natural contrast and colors to them. But when the water gets dirty, I like to fish with things like this. So really obvious whites and dark colors with contrasting bars down the side and a big deep diving lure that puts out a big vibe in the water. Um, and these are a great barrel lure as well, these jackal squirrels. So fishing around the runoff and drains and things like that, stuff like that or big soft plastics too with big paddle tails or this is called an oscillator tail or a thumper tail and big lures like this during those periods of time where it's really dirty they can be super effective as well because you've also got the mullet heading up and sitting right up on those drains or washing down with the bait and that's what the barra and the jacks are waiting for stuff like this the other option um, like I said with the weedless presentations is um, to run a, an EWG hook and this is one of my skip casting setups. You can see that there, that's a flash arrow J shad and it's, it's been rigged weedless like that with a twist lock at the front, a little weight to pull it down but have a look at that big tail at the back and that puts out a big vibe in that discoloured water and just gives the fish a chance to be able to you know, tune in and find it in that really dirty water and again, just that darker presentation with the silhouette and that profile, I just think it gets found a lot better in, in that dirty water or discoloured water. You want something super obvious. So I've been fishing for bass this week and um, 
often the bass tend to get blown down in really heavy flood conditions and you can fish from a couple of different ways. If you go chasing bass, you want to be fishing with things like the finesse frogs by Z-Man, little weedless surface presentations or little creature baits like a little um, like a live target field mouse. I did a review on that just this week. The reason for that is up in those fresh systems there's so much debris and runoff that it can become really difficult to get a lure down through all the weed and stuff. So I use those finesse frogs and they're just such a natural presentation. When you're skipping and throwing in it's creating that disturbance then they've got the little paddling legs at the back. Everything that's getting washed down sits on the surface so you've got grasshoppers frogs rats mice lizards everything and the bass just start gorging on the surface and that's especially effective in those first couple of days the places you want to be sort of um, looking for are either the holding points so the big holding points where you come down a system and then there's like a turn before it heads off into the main area or little offshoot little runs or, or, or little side areas of a creek where the, the water might sort of slow down and pull and sit there where bait might try to sit. A lot of the time the bass don't want to get washed all the way down. They try to get off onto those little side pockets and sit in there and feed in there. So if you saw my field mouse review, uh, you'll see that those little drains and those offside areas of creeks are really effective to try and get your fish once that flood happens. With trevally fishing, um, you want to be fishing probably more so with surface lures and really loud stuff. And it's the same with jacks. So these duo realis or realis walking lures with a really loud ball, these Lucky Craft G splashes have got really loud balls in them and a big deep cup for a loud popping sound. These are really the kind of thing that you want to be using on the surface because a surface disturbance gives the fish a, a better chance of you know, honing in on it and finding that bait. So using these around the edges of lakes and canals during that really dirty period is the way to go. A lot of the bait when it's getting pushed down through systems will start to sit off on the edges and you'll notice that during the time it's very difficult for the fish to sort of pull up and school up bait in the middle of the lakes because of the, the visibility. So they tend to try and feed up against the edges. So little poppers, walkers, things like that, they're really the way to go during that dirty water period and fishing hard along the edges. Like even throwing it up onto the sand and tweaking it off the sand is a really good way to go. And then around bridges as well. Anywhere where the water disturbance is sort of pulling in like usual, those areas are like holding points for a lot of the bait to try and stay in their zone and not get washed down too far. During these sort of flood events, in the, in the aftermath of that, once things start to cool down a little bit and slow down, one of the best options is to go fishing with prawn and shrimp imitations. And I've been doing some reviews on different shrimp options over the last couple of weeks for mangrove jack and barra. Um, but it's really now when you want to be getting these prawn and shrimp imitations out there and start to fish them. Because what happens is a lot of the shrimp and that can't, they get out of the mud and they start to move and they end up finding their place between that brackish water, the, the fresh water run out and then where the salt meets. And if you can find those areas in the rivers in these post flood conditions when it starts to clear up in that sort of week or two afterwards, that can be super effective. Let me give you an example. This is one of these absolute shrimp by, um, that Zarek have sort of just released. These things are unreal. But, and look at, like, look at the profile on that thing. Now, as an, as an option, I would definitely use that as a first option, but that color profile I think is a little bit more realistic, um, and I'd use that in clearer conditions. Even with that little bit of black up the top, I'd prefer to use something that's got a lot more contrast to it with bars down the side. You can see that, and that's even got a glow to it, but the bars down the side, the dark bars, the dark little legs, that's the difference in the types of lures that I'll go for in the floody conditions, where there's a lot of discoloration, just so you get an idea on the colour options that you want to go for. Real distinct contrasting lures, even whites, like a really big presence you know, in the water is a white during those times. So that's the sort of thing that I would use. And these prawn and shrimp in that sort of week to two weeks as it starts to clear up is a great way to go for mangrove jack, everything basically, barra, trevally. Um, barra are a bit different. And, and, you know, when there's flood events up north, 
Uh, similar things sort of play out here a little bit with the small numbers that we've got down here, but it's nothing like the carnage that happens um, further up north in Queensland when there's that big runoff. You really want to be getting after those barra here, down around these bigger drains and the bigger runoff areas in that first day or so. And as it starts to slow down, the fishing definitely slows down for them as well. That's some information on how I like to fish it. Bull shark fishing goes, goes really well during the dirty water and it's so scary for me. I've been coming down here this afternoon and just watching people swimming in the shallows, getting dragged around behind a speedboat in these canals, in the dirty water. Um, it's really a problem, I think. And, and I've, you know, I'm out here gonna catch some this afternoon um, and, and get some action on Noah because they're, they're just in, in a frenzy out here, but people just don't realize. So hopefully that's helped you with some of your options. I think the flathead fishing is made very difficult when it gets really dirty. You want to head right down to the mouth of those systems, especially if you're using little plastics and things like that. Um, and the darker colors are the way to go. You want to be fishing mainly sort of weedless, so you're not picking up all of that, you know, the, the weed and the reeds that are getting pushed down and all the, um, even the freshwater weeds and, and lilies and things are coming down the system this week. So hopefully that helps with what you're trying to do. The bass fishing, you know, it's fun because you can get right up at the top of systems if it's not too big of a flood. And, uh, and the bass will make their way up using that new water. Uh, but with a big flood event like we've had, where it's like 250 mil, a lot of the bass get knocked around and thrown down into the system. So places like Narang, you can start to fish some of the top bridges there. Um, as an option and through that top area of Narang River where you'd usually chase, you know, Trevally and Jacks, you tend to get some bass as well that have been blown down as well. So anyway, I hope that helps you. Let me know what you think and if there's some techniques or tactics that you like to use in these runoff conditions, let me know in the comments what you think and how you like to do it. And um, hopefully it puts you onto a couple of fish and helps with some of the headaches that you might experience when you go down to your local. She's all dirtied up and you're not quite sure which lures to throw or, or where to go to. All right, I'll see you in the next video.